Nowadays, the Tower of London is thought to be a horrifying stronghold associated with executions, torture, and incarceration. The famous tower contains numerous tales of misery, many of which are connected to the Tudor era. However, the Chapel of St. Peter at Vincola is located near to Tower Green, which is thought to have served as the location of some notable people's and queen's executions. However, the church contains over a thousand people's bodies and bones buried in the crypt and beneath the floor. The most well-known woman to lose her head inside the tower was Queen Anne Boleyn, who was buried next to Catherine Howard, Henry VIII's fifth wife, who was also wedded to her husband after she passed away. The two women lost their heads on the executioner's scaffold beside the church, but Lady Jane Grey, the nine-day queen, who also lost her head during Queen Mary Thar's reign, is buried within the chapel with the other two women. Nevertheless, this implies that three executed English queens are buried in the same cemetery, meters apart from one another. But the story of this is much darker than you could ever imagine. After Anne Boleyn was executed on May 19, 1536, inside the Tower of London, it became clear that her burial had been hastily done, and that because of her being labeled a traitor, she had not been permitted to have a funeral or a memorial service. Instead of using the Axeman of London to take his wife's head, Henry VIII had purportedly showed his wife some mercy by ordering a French swordsman to travel to England. She was to be buried in silence, Anne was slain by sword, which was considered to be more dependable and efficient than an axe, and her head was removed in one swift strike from the Sword of Sea's weapon. Her ladies-in-waiting then clambered up the scaffold to gather up her body and head, but little thought had been given to what to do after her head was removed. Her corpse was not released to her family, and they gathered this inside of an oak chest or an elm trunk that had previously been used to hold bows and arrows. This was subsequently used for Anne's casket, after which she was hurriedly buried inside a hastily dug grave and moved inside the chapel of St. Peter ad Vincula, adjacent to the scaffold site. Regarding Anne's final resting place and whether or not a private, intimate funeral service was performed, not much is known. The ladies-in-waiting had also covered Anne's body with a cloth before it was buried in a small grave in front of the high altar. The Connell of the Tower of London was in charge of both the executions and the burials. Additionally, George Barron lost his head on Tower Hill, and Anne was buried adjacent to or near the grave of her brother, who had passed away a few days prior to being charged with the same crimes as Anne. However, Anne's remains would eventually be dug out. Catherine Howard was the fifth wife of Henry VIII, having married him years after a baron. Despite her terrible background, it is now thought that Catherine was mistreated and nurtured by numerous men, including King Henry VII. When Catherine was a teenager, she became involved in a scandal where she was accused of having an extramarital affair with Francis Deerroom, the king's closest courtier, and another man behind her husband's back. She also lost her head inside the Tower of London and was executed on a scaffold covered in towel green but she was not permitted a swordsman like, like Anne, and Catherine was executed by axe. Her head was taken off roughly in one swift blow of the weapon. There was little information available about Catherine's burial after her execution, but she was executed without mercy and made to kneel in sawdust on the scaffold to soak up her blood. Anne started Boleyn, was given a large amount of black velvet to line the scaffold. Henry VII ordered her body to be coated in quicklime, thus wiping her off the face of the earth. She was carried inside the chapel of St. Peter at Vincula and dumped into a rough grave. It is said that she was buried close to Anne Boleyn to absorb her blood, and Anne started. Boleyn received an enormous quantity of black velvet to cover the scaffold, but little was known about what happened to her grave after Catherine was put to death. But this would not be the end of the queens who lost their heads inside the Tower of London. Lady Jane Grey was executed inside the tower on the scaffold, and she is remembered as the nine-day queen who came onto the throne following the death of Henry's son, Edward VI. Jane was a Protestant, and she was then turned on by the Privy Council, which supported the rebellious Mary. The first Mary was known as Bloody Mary 
and Jane then became a prisoner of Mary inside the walls of the Tower of London. She was then sentenced to death for treason, and she was beheaded by an axe within the tower on the same scaffold again. It was claimed regarding Jane's body that she was still lying on the scaffold later that day and that there was an extraordinary amount of blood that had come from such a small body, but then later that evening inside the chapel of St. Peter at Vincula. The remains of Jane were interred in the chapel near the bodies of the other two queens. However, during Victorian times, there was a significant amount of work carried out inside the chapel. The queen was not impressed that the chapel, which was the burial site of three queens, had fallen into disrepair, and that the bones of the queens were being held in this place, which was falling into ruin. The pavement of the chapel had become uneven in places, and it was dangerous. The flooring was then to be fixed, but with this, the stones were lifted, the ground was excavated, and the bodies within the chapel were then unearthed. It was worried that the remains had been desecrated, but the remains of many prominent Chuda and Stuart figures were found, and they were then identified. Specifically, the body of Anne Boleyn was found, and her remains were dislocated. The burial of Anne had been disturbed as another woman's corpse had interfered with her burial location, and the Queen's physician was dispatched to describe the body and identify it, and he confirmed that this was Anne Boleyn. He wrote that the bones of the head indicate a well-formed and round skull with an intellectual forehead straight orbital ridge, large eyes, oval face, and rather square full chin. The remains of the vertebra and the bones of the lower limbs indicate a well-formed woman of middle height with a short and slender neck. The ribs show depth and roundness of chest. The hand and foot bones indicate delicate and well-shaped hands and feet with tapering fingers and a narrow foot. Dr. Moret was convinced that this was a baron and that this woman had lost her head at the blade of a sharp weapon such as a sword, but also found inside the chapel were the remains of Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury, who was executed during the reign of Henry V, and she had royal blood. Being a member of the Plantagenet family, however, it was also discovered that there were some decayed remains and small amounts of bone found near Margaret Pole, and these were then attributed to Catherine Howard. The remains were not full and were just fragments, but these were then collected. The search was then on for the remains of Lady Jane Grey, and it was said she was buried on the west side of the chancel, inside of the chapel. Work was not carried out on this part of the chapel, which meant the remains of Lady Jane Grey were not discovered. But one theory is that there may have never been anything to find of Jane as she was just a teenager, like Catherine Howard. This is because her bones may not be the remains of Lady Jane Grey, and it was said she was buried on the west side of the chancel inside of the chapel, and work was not carried out on this part of the chapel. This meant the remains of Lady Jane Grey were not discovered, but one theory is that there may have never been anything to find of Jane, as she was just a teenager like Catherine Howard was. This is because her bones may not have fully hardened and developed, and that her bones may not have stood the test of time in the ground. But Jane was buried close to where her husband was, as Mary I did allow this for Jane. There are other accounts that Lady Jane Grey was discovered and that she may have been placed inside of a new lead casket before she was prepared for reburial. But this is similar to Catherine Howard as it claimed that her remains were also never discovered and Henry Vi may have been successful in his attempts to wipe his fifth wife off the face of the earth. But after the repair work occurred inside of the Tower of London's chapel, the idea was conceived to place the famous people's remains beneath the high altar. A priest supervised the dignified interment of the caskets after they were brought into the chapel. The locations of these were noted, this implies that three Tudor queens are buried beneath the Tower of London's high altar, essentially in the same grave. In the front row, Queen Anne Boleyn is interred close to her brother George Boleyn in the high altar. Catherine Howard is buried next to Jane Boleyn, Lady Rushford, who was put to death. It is uncommon for the queens to be buried together in the same grave, and even more uncommon for them to be buried close to the location of their executions. Lady Jane Grey, the nine-day queen, 
is next to her on the front row. Among them are a number of other notable royals and officials, including James Scott, the illegitimate rebel son of Charles II, Lady Jane and Catherine Howard. Lady Jane Grey never made it out of the tower alive and 500 years on, they are still there resting. Thank you for watching.